Bully Ray says he wants a match with Tessa Blanchard. What could be next for Sue Young? Will we be seeing a TNA TV show in the future? The number one contenders tournament is in full swing. All this and more are coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, Lewis Carlin here. Thanks for joining me today. So Bully Ray said in a recent interview that he wants a match with Tessa Blanchard. This is very, very interesting. This is very, very interesting indeed. Uh, first of all, I don't, I'm not sure what his contract status is with Ring of Honor, uh, although I did see um, there was a, an article on mandatory.com and uh, Bully Ray was uh, introduced uh, in this article as the former Ring of Honor star and W. I'm sorry, the former WWE Hall of Famer and Ring of Honor star. Uh, so they're calling him the former WWE Hall of Famer and Ring of Honor star. I'm not sure if they mean former Ring of Honor star as well. Uh, first of all, I don't know how he could be a former WWE Hall of Famer. Did the WWE take that away from him? Uh, um, I know the Dudley, believe the Dudley boys are in. Did they did they revoke the the Hall of Fame uh, status from from Bully Ray? Um, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, uh, but um, I think yeah, I think that they're, they're referring that he's a former Ring of Honor star. So I, I don't know what his contract status is with Ring of Honor. But uh, but regardless, he says that he's very interested in that match with with Tessa Blanchard, and he says he envisions himself hopping over the guardrail. And um, power bombing her into the concrete, and uh, and he goes on. He's saying that it, it would be a really good match, and he would absolutely sell for her, and uh, something that um, that he um, is like I said again, very very interested in. And on the flip side of that, though, they asked him if he would be interested in a match with Moose, and uh, he said no. And this is very interesting because you know it's it's i don't know if you could re- read between the lines there he said he's not interested in uh the match with moose because the two big guys it'd be a couple of clotheslines um uh what else did he say it would be a, sh- a bunch of shoulder tackles he said it wouldn't be very interesting at all and moose again like i said read between the lines here moose is the was the self-proclaimed greatest tna world champion of all time he's carrying that belt bully ray also a tna uh, champion Kind of downplaying, uh, downplaying, uh, downplaying Moose uh, Moose's ability a little bit in in being able to give him a good match. Uh, so it's a little little uh, little uh, subtle hit there at Moose, uh, but but I would I would be all for let I would be all for a, a Bully Ray Tessa Blanchard match and 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 he even like I said he even has the uh, the the way it would begin down is wants to hop over the guardrail and and power bomb her into a, into the concrete and thus setting up the feud and and I looked on on Twitter and I I, I checked the internet uh, to see if Tessa Blanchard has responded uh, but she hasn't respond yet so i i wonder if this is uh, the seeds being planted for for bully ray uh, to make his return to impact wrestling and, and he says that he he, he the, the new management is doing a really good job the characters that he really likes is sue young he's a big fan of so he's a fan of sammy callahan which by the way would be a great opponent for bully ray uh and and i i don't know if he was supposed to maybe possibly be a part of the of the tna um pay-per-view that was canceled due to, due, the pan, due to the pandemic uh so i don't know if he was supposed to be there or not but i do find it very interesting that that he's saying that he wants this match with tessa blanchard uh the, the current impact wrestling world heavyweight champion uh and hey bully ray wants to come back to impact wrestling you know i'd, I'd be all for that I, I love the character of bully ray uh but again i i i'm not sure what his contract status is with ring of honor i don't know if he's still with ring of honor i don't know if ring of honor is still running shows i don't know if he's able to go wrestle for other promotions uh, but regardless he well, he stated it. He wants the match with Tessa Blanchard, and I hope Tessa Blanchard responds. Uh, if Tessa Blanchard does respond, then you know this thing is um, the seeds are planted for a for a Bully Ray and Tessa Blanchard feud. Uh, so I'm 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 checking her Twitter. I'm checking her Facebook um, periodically uh, today and tomorrow to see if she actually uh, responds to that. And um, 
Who knows? It'll be a, it'll be a great match. It'll be a great match. Uh, could it be for the Impact Wrestling World Championship? Very possible. Although I think uh, by that time, uh, Michael Elgin will be will, will be the Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, but um, I think Tessa and Bully Ray would uh, give us a fantastic match, and and hopefully it's something that we see. We see down the road. We see down the road. And like I said, um, I'm very happy um, that he had nothing but praise for the current uh, Impact Wrestling Management because they are doing a fantastic job. Uh, Don Callis, um, uh, Scott Demore doing a fantastic job. And uh, it's recognized by Bully Ray. So uh, so um, might see him in Impact Wrestling soon. Might see him in Impact Wrestling soon. Uh, it's, it's interesting, though. I'm going to go back to that. He doesn't want to match with Moose. You know, Moose, the, the self-proclaimed TNA World Champion, uh, says he's the greatest world champion of all, TNA World Champion of all time. Uh, you would think that uh, he would take an exception to that. But again, like I said, this could be a, just a subtle knock on Moose. Uh, just a subtle knock on Moose. Uh, saying that, uh, oh, uh, we wouldn't have a good match. We wouldn't have a good match, no. He's lacks the basically. He's basically saying Moose lacks the ability to give me a good match. Uh, but but Tessa Blanchard, on the end, on the other hand, will give me a fantastic match. Uh, so he's obviously on Team Impact here, uh, and not Team Team TNA. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. Uh, Sue Young, Sue Young, as we all know, has uh, re-signed with Impact Wrestling. Uh, we've known this uh, for for about two weeks now. So. I was thinking, what, what's what's next? What are they going to do with uh, Sue Young? I know right now uh, Susie is um, in a in a sort of a mini program right now with Kylie Ray. They they've had a couple of backstage segments together. Uh, so how how is it going to play out? How is it going to play out? I, I think this Kylie Ray Susie thing is is going to go on for a bit. We're going to see more segments. Uh, so are they going to be a tag team? Are we going to get a tag team, Kylie Ray and, and Susie? Are they going to become like best buddies? Uh, I know Kylie Ray said that. Oh, I like Susie. Uh, is or is this all going to lead up to uh, Sue Young uh, showing up and uh, attacking Kylie Ray, thus giving us a Kylie Ray Sue Young feud? Are we going to see Susie going forward mainly, and Sue Young only shows up once in a while, kind of like an attraction uh, when when we need we when we need like the demon, kind of like Finn the Balor, Finn Balor, and and the demon Finn Balor. Uh, are they are they going to go that route where Sue Young just shows up um, when when necessary? Um, the sky's the limit here. I, I mean, I don't think she's. I don't think she's gonna go back to feuding with, with Rosemary or or Jessica Havoc. I think that's done for now. I think she's gonna move on to something else. I could see my 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 gut feeling. My gut feeling on this is we're gonna see a few more um, segments with Susie and Kylie Ray, and uh, Kylie Ray is gonna be in a match. The lights are gonna go out, and they're gonna come back on. And we're going to see uh, Sue Young in the ring. And Sue Young is going to take out Kylie Ray, Thus leading to a Kylie Ray sue Young feud. That, that's my gut feeling on it. And, I, and I'm sure as the segments, we see segments with Kylie Ray and, and, and Susie. We're going to see um, hints of Sue Young showing up. Uh, and it's all going to lead to uh, Sue Young attacking Kylie Ray. Um, which, you know, I'm all for. It'd be a great feud. Uh, Kylie Ray, um, cute little Kylie Ray against the demon uh, Sue Young. It's the classic, classic uh, face versus heel feud. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's my feeling on that. So let's move on. Uh, a lot of people are saying uh, that they wouldn't mind seeing uh, a, TNA, a TNA standalone show. Uh, with with Moose as the TNA champion, you know, and I I, I have to say when um, when I first saw the TNA title, uh, they were bringing um, they were bringing the TNA branding, they were doing the the the, the special, and they were going to do the pay per view. I was a little skeptical. I was like, uh, uh, don't need to go to the past. You got to look to the future. Uh, that's what I was. That's what I was uh, chirping about, <laughs> but uh, you know, I I changed my mind. I'm I'm all for it. I'm I'm totally on board, as I stated in my last podcast. Completely on board with this whole TNA thing. And um, as for a a standalone TNA branded show, absolutely, absolutely. Why not? 
why not? And and think and how would they do that though? You know, and I know Moose is a TNA champion, uh, Tessa Blanchard, the Impact Wrestling World Champion, uh, and people think you know they're they're headed towards a title versus title match. Uh, but why does it have to be a title versus title match? Now, why does it have to be title for title to determine who the real champion is? Couldn't they both be champions? I mean, especially if you're going to have two shows, you're going to need both titles. You're going to need the TNA title, you're going to need the Impact Wrestling World title. Uh, so here's here's my idea. I don't know if let, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, but my idea is this: like I said, it doesn't have to be title for title. It could be just a a bragging rights uh, match. You know, it could be Moose versus whoever the Impact World Champion is at the time. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be Michael Elgin. I, I do think Michael Elgin is going to defeat Tessa Blanchard for the Impact Wrestling World title. Uh, so we could get Moose, the TNA champion, against Michael Elgin, the, the Impact Wrestling World Champion, or Tessa Blanchard, whoever the, whoever the champion is, and just it'll be a bragging rights match. I don't know if they could call it a bragging rights match, but but basically whoever wins the match, their show becomes the flagship sh- the flagship show. Um, either TNA or Impact Wrestling. So if Moose wins, TNA becomes the main show. If whoever the Impact Wrestling World Champion is, Tessa Blanchard, Michael Elkin, whoever it is, Impact Wrestling will become the main show. And whoever loses, of course, their their the title that they're they're representing, their show will be the secondary show. You know, it's just just something I was thinking about. It, it's something different. It could be something different, and there could be a pay per view. Um, they could have their own standalone pay per views. You know, a TNA pay-per-view, Impact Wrestling pay-per-view. Uh, and once or twice a year, they come together and they have uh, Impact Wrestling versus TNA. This way you could build up, you know, you'll keep everybody away from each other. You know, build build the characters, build the talent up on each show. And uh, once or twice a year, you have the TNA versus Impact um pay-per-view. You know, I think I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. You know, and of course, you'd have to bring in more talent. You'd have to bring in a lot more talent. And you could have like, talent swaps as well. Uh, well. I don't want to get too WWE. I don't want to go until we could have trades or anything like that because everyone's like, oh, oh, you try to beat SmackDown Raw. Uh, but, um, but uh, no, it's just, just keep the brand separate. And, and um, you know, and even like I said, you know, the, the TNA versus Impact uh, pay per view, and whoever wins, their show becomes their show becomes a flagship show becomes an number one show and it, and you can even have you know the prime spot is tuesday and the secondary spot is thursday uh, and but say uh, say moose say moose wins and his tna and tna is the number one show is the main show so it's on tuesday nights and and um impact wrestling's on thursdays and then a year from now, you have the pay-per-view and, and Impact Wrestling wins. The Impact Wrestling champion beats a TNA champion. And their show moves to Tuesday because they're the prime show. And then TNA, the secondary show, moves to Thursday. You might think it's a dumb idea. You know, and and if you do, that's perfectly okay. But it's just something I was thinking about, something to do differently. I'm not saying it's not set in stone or anything like that, but I'm thinking something to do, something a little different, something that hasn't been done before. Kind of like Tessa Blanchard as the as the first female World Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, that's something different. You know, just do do something a little different. You know, so that's 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 what I was thinking. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Uh, that that could be possible. Uh, but again, you'd have to bring in a lot. You'd have to bring in a lot more talent. You'd have to bring in a lot more talent. And I think the X Division title would move, should move to to the TNA show because that's a TNA title. It's been with, um, it originated in TNA. So the X Division title would have to, would move to, would, would have to move to TNA, the TNA show. And the Impact Wrestling would get, Impact Wrestling would get, um, we get another title, uh, maybe like the U.S. title, the TV title, or something like that. Um, and, and and even if it's a secondary show, it could maybe it could it could only be for an, it could be an hour. It could be one. No, I think they would both have to be two hours. They would both have to be. They would have to bring in some some decent talents, and um, I think they would both have to be two two hours. But they would have a uh, bragging rights. And well, what's what's the most what's the more prestigious show? There, there you go. They, they could the more prestigious show, the more prestigious title, and they whoever is holding. Uh, either TNA or Impact, whoever's holding, whoever is holding the more prestigious title gets to gets gets bragging rights. That's that's my idea. That's my idea. 
All right, man. So, so speaking of Moose, speaking of T- the, the TNA champion, um, took on Suicide again. He took on Suicide again uh, last week. And again, Suicide gave him one hell of a match. And, and, and Moose just, just barely squeaked out a win against Suicide. Just barely squeaked out a win against Suicide. And I'm thinking, why, why is, why is this happening? Why is suicide giving Moose so much trouble two weeks in a row? Well, first of all, let's go back for a second. Um, nine hours before the show actually started, uh, they advertised Moose versus Suicide on Twitter. But that match really wasn't officially made until the show, until Josh Matthews was um, interviewing Moose. So the match was made during that interview. So, but, but. Uh, it was announced on Twitter, so they kind of gave that little spoiler away. But anyway, they they need to they need to watch uh, watch out for that um, a little better. Uh, but but suicide, why is suicide giving him such such a headache? You know, Moose should have that should be like a, a three minute match. Uh, something this is leading up to something. I like I said last week. Uh, I think Chris Sabin. Or two, or two, or maybe not the last one, but uh, I said in a a past podcast uh, that I think Chris Saban is going to be suicide, and I think this is kind of leading up to you know suicide's going to want one more chance, and uh, before the match starts, he's going to take the mask off, and it's going to be someone like Chris Saban or or um, a former uh, former TNA star. So I, I think because I, I don't think suicide will be giving Moose you know fits for two weeks in a row unless they just don't have. And any other TNA guys that they could throw in there with him, so they they uh, decide uh, let's let's go with Suicide and give Suicide to uh, give him two really good matches against Moose. Uh, but we'll see we'll see where this leads. It's I'm, I'm kind of intrigued right now. I think it's I think it's kind of lead it's gonna lead to something because uh, like I said like I said Moose Moose should have had, been in the ring for a total of maybe four minutes. Uh, both matches combined with, with Suicide, especially since he's saying that he's the um, the greatest TNA champion of all time. Suicide shouldn't be uh, he shouldn't be squeaking out victories over Suicide, uh, but but we'll see we'll see what um, we'll see what transpires uh, in the weeks to come. I got my eye on this, very very interested in uh, seeing uh, what happens. So we have the the number one contenders tournament is in full swing. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this is how it looks. Uh, so so uh, Michael Elgin defeated Sammy Callahan in a phenomenal match. Absolutely love that match uh, between the two. Personally, and I know BQ feels the same way, and I'm sure a lot of you out there will feel the same way as well. This should have been the finals. This should have been the final match. It should have been Michael Elgin versus Sammy Callahan in the finals. Not in the first round. Um... Again, not taken away from the match. It was fantastic. Uh, but when you think about it, the new character, Sammy Callahan, uh, the new hacker character, breaks away from OVE, is now 0-2. He's, he's winless. Winless as the new character. So he tapped out. Well, he didn't tap out. He lost to Ken Shamrock. He passed out. And now he, uh, he lost in the first round to Michael Elgin. No, it, it shouldn't have been this way. It shouldn't have been this way. It should have... Sammy Callahan should have been on the other side of the bracket. Uh, I think it should have been... Uh, how would they work this, though? Because I know they got Ace Austin in there. We're going to talk about him soon. I'm glad he's in there and not Ken Shamrock. Uh, but it could have been what they could have... It would have been intriguing if we saw Sammy Callahan against Madman Fulton. Because uh, then, you know, Madman Fulton would be a match that he would want. Uh, and then he could try to get a little bit of revenge. Because OVE really got no revenge at all for uh, Sammy Callahan attacking him, attacking them. Uh, you would think that, though, oh, Sammy Callahan doesn't want to be with us anymore. So we're going we're gonna to get in there. We're going to try to take him out. But there was no retaliation on, on OVE's part at all. So that's why I think it should have been Sammy Callahan against Madman Fulton. Hernandez, I don't know if Hernandez really needed to be in this tournament, uh, to be honest. Uh, I, I think uh, Hernandez could have been left out of the tournament and could have been an opponent for, for Moose. He still could be an opponent for Moose, uh, but I think he should have been left out of the tournament. Um, or maybe, you know, or flip it, or flip Hernandez over to uh, against Elgin and have Elgin beat Hernandez. Okay, that they could have done that. Hernandez flip over uh, and lose in the first round to uh, Michael Elgin. Uh, but back to Sammy Callahan, Madman Fulton. This would have this would have been a very intriguing first round match, and I would have put Sammy Callahan over. I would have had 
you know, the OVE, uh, Jake Christ and Dave Christ, cost Man Man Fulton the match. Thus, the breakup, which we saw, um, the OVE breakup, Man Man Fulton saying he no longer wants to be a part of OVE, that would have made a lot more sense had this happened, has, had it gone, gone down the way I just said, that uh, Jake Christ and Dave Christ cost Man Man Fulton the match. And then at the end of that match, Madman Fulton could have broke away and said, you know what, I'm done with you guys. You cost me this match, I'm through. And uh, that would have made a lot more sense. And then Sammy Callahan moves on to the next round. Um, in that case, you know, his, his next opponent would have been Ace Austin, but I would have put Sammy Callahan over Ace Austin and put him in the finals against Michael Elgin. And they would have had a fantastic match. Trey Miguel against Michael Elgin, that's, that match doesn't intrigue me at all because we all know... Who is going to win that match? You know, there's there's no way Trey Miguel is going to defeat Michael Elgin. I think if Rohit Raju had gotten to the second round, which which I really wanted, I could think I you could think it's it's very very feasible that Rohit Raju defeats Michael Elgin and gets to the finals. And I think that would have been a more uh, I'm going to use the word intriguing again, more intriguing matchup. Uh, but as it stands right now. Uh, it's uh, Elgin and Trey Miguel. Uh, Elgin's gonna get to the get to the finals, and then Ace Austin against um, Hernandez. I I really hope Ace Austin wins because Hernandez. They're making Hernandez seem like an absolute killer when I think he should just be putting over new talent, and that that's my opinion. So I really hope that Ace Austin gets the, gets the victory over Hernandez because I I think Elgin and Ace Austin would be a would be a great finals. But I know Impact's probably going to want to get the two big men in there, so we're probably going to see Michael Elgin against Hernandez. But um, um. Elgin's got to win this match. Elgin's got to win this tournament, I should say. Uh, and, and he's going to move on against uh, Tessa Blanchard. And I think, like I said earlier, he's going to be the next Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, but um, I, I still wish... Because uh, what's, what's what's next to Sammy Callahan? He's 0-2. He's 0-2. Who's, uh, who's going to be his next opponent? Unless Madman Fulton attacks Sammy Callahan. But I think it would have happened already. Uh, so I don't I don't really know what would be next. Where does Sammy Callahan go from here? So I I don't know. And, and on the flip side of that, where does Madman Fulton go? Where was where does Madman Fulton and OVE uh, are they? Is Madman Fulton gonna uh, reunite with Eric Young? Because we all know Eric Young's coming back to Impact Wrestling. Uh, so is this gonna be a sanity reunion? Are they gonna have Eric Young come in and and? Um, Reunite with Madman Fulton. Is uh, Madman Fulton going to go with Crazy Steve? Um, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of possibilities there. A lot of possibilities. And and what what's what's going to happen now with uh, Dave and Jake Christ? Um, I know you, you got, on the one side, you got Madman Fulton. He's, he's going on his own. Like, he wherever he goes, he's, he could definitely become a monster, uh, whether it's with Crazy Steve or Eric Young, as I said, but where, where's, where does Jake and Dave Christ, where, where do they go from here? Uh, do they just become a tag team again? Do they uh, get those masks that they were wearing um, when they first came in and they start wearing them again? Uh, where, is it, where does it go? Does Eric Young come in and take them under his wing? And uh, they feel with Madman Fulton and, and Crazy Steve. There's, like I said, there's a lot of possibilities here of what's going to happen. A lot of possibilities. Uh, so we'll 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 keep our eye on the situation, man. We'll keep our eye on the situation. Uh, and um, I know they're they're going to be doing the next set of tapings. I wonder if Tessa Blanchard is going to be part of the next set of tapings. I know they're starting up in June. And I know the uh, um, the the curve is flattening right now uh, with this with with this pandemic, uh, things are starting to open up. So I wonder if I, I wonder if she's going to be part of the next um, next set of tapings. Uh, and I'd like to see Jordan Grace is back as well. So um, hopefully they'll be part of the next set of tapings, and we'll get um, she'll be defending her uh, Impact Wrestling World Championship against uh, the winner of the number one uh, contenders tournament, which is going to definitely be michael elgin and um a lot of things don't forget eddie edwards is still out there you know i wonder if he's gonna be part of the, the next set of tapings what new faces are we gonna see on the next set of tapings it's like a week and a half away uh before they start uh, doing the taping so um i'm 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 really i'm i'm looking forward to impact impact is they got a lot of good stuff coming up on the horizon and um you know it's 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 
it's it's a good time to be an Impact Wrestling fan. It's a really good time to be an Impact Wrestling fan, and um, and that's it. And that's it. But before I end this, before I end this, I wanna I wanna just say something. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, ever follows Four One One Mania. Uh, and uh, Larry Zonka uh, but um, unfortunate news that we got uh, this week uh, was Larry Zonka um, unexpectedly passed away and uh, he um, was a, a mainstay with 411 Mania um, doing all his uh, reviews New Japan Pro Wrestling WWE reviews I believe he was doing NXT and of course Impact Wrestling and uh, his reviews were a a, well, part of my pro wrestling ritual every single week, and uh, I just want to say that he always did a fantastic job, and um, he's going to be missed. He's going to be missed. Uh, Larry Zanka passing away unexpectedly uh, this week, uh, so I just want to say uh, thank you for all the fantastic reviews, Larry. Um, I, I didn't know him personally. I don't didn't know, know him personally, uh, but um, I knew him through his reviews, which were fantastic. And uh, he was always fair with his reviews, and they were always well written. And uh, they're going to be missed. And um, and Larry, you're going to be missed. You're going to be missed, man. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. Uh, that said, I want to say thank you very much for listening today. My name is Lewis Carlin. Uh, this is Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.